I love coming to work every day because middle school children are awesome. They are funny. They are full of life, full of energy, full of questions, and really mostly happy. We separate the sixth graders in our sixth grade wing. The sixth graders need a place where they can all be with each other and that sort of builds a, a sense of community when you see the same people in the halls, when you see them in your classrooms. If you are new to the school and you didn't know anyone, don't be worried about that because whenever you first come in, everyone's super nice and you'll get to know everyone really easily, the teachers and the students. And we're gonna assume that we're probably 100 miles away from the epicenter of this earthquake. Remember the P wave is that first vibration and then the S wave and the surface waves is where the building's really gonna to start to shake. Okay, here we go, earthquake, P wave. S wave, surface wave, and it's over, it's over. <laughs> we're all safe, we're safe. We're gonna continue with what we started yesterday, working with your debate teams, deciding on what facts and statistics you need. My favorite class is social studies because I really like expressing my opinion and I always have something to say about everything. This one right there, debate.org. The academics here at Shadyside Middle School are really superb. The bar is set really high for these children and it's wonderful to watch them. You set the bar high and they get over it. They are difficult, some are more difficult than others, but it's all doable, which is really nice. So I know the area of a triangle is half of a rectangle, okay? How about the area of a parallelogram? Math is my favorite subject because I love Mr. Vadness. Mr. Vadness makes me laugh and smile every day, and I feel like I've learned more in math than I learned in third, fourth, and fifth combined, which is really crazy. Most of our kids take what we consider to be grade level courses, but we do have options for children who are ready for something beyond that. We have advanced math classes for sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth graders. We also have an advanced science class. We teach the senior school physics first class. You've got your bungee jumper. He free falls for 2.5 seconds, and then he has four seconds where the bungee cord is actually stretching and slowing him down. How high is the bridge above the ground? I yeah, got, you got too. 80, 80. Anybody else get somewhere near 80? Any 80s over here? 400 grams dropping in three, two, one. All three of the grade level science labs in the middle school have been renovated. With these new spaces, we are able to get the children more actively engaged in science. 13.523 newtons. We're gonna pick it up at the top of 29. Who was reading Lord Capulet for me yesterday? And I'm also gonna need a Lady Capulet and a Juliet. Lord. <laughs> So we're now back at the Capulet house. Now by my maiden head at 12 years old. I feel that the size of our middle school is just right. We have just over 200 kids here. God forbid, why is that girl? Classes are generally around 15, 16 kids. So the adults in the building, they get to know each child very, very well as a learner and as a human being. Well, I like English the best. It's definitely a strong suit. My English teacher is also my advisor, and she's great. Oh no, what am I gonna do now? Every child has an advisor. The advisor sees the child at least three times a day. First thing in the morning, we have break time, mid-morning, and then there's a period called conference period. Yes, that's one of my favorite like books. That one. We get to go see our teachers, we get to do homework. You really need to like use that time wisely. During conference period, all of the teachers are free and not busy, ready to help anyone who needs it. So you need to go on Google Classrooms and look up the project guideline. Okay. Okay. The critical piece is always know what you don't know, and then know how to get that information. 
And boy, is there any better lesson for life, let alone in school, than knowing, okay, this is where my issue is, how do I solve it? All kids take music here at the middle school all year long, but they get to choose. Do they want to be in the chorus? Do they play an instrument? Do they want to be in band? Or do they just want to do general music and learn about music? We'll start with the hot soy and the kale. Maybe. At the end of our academic day, every day, our children are all engaged in either an athletic option or an activity. You have to do at least one sport and there's also, other than sports, you can do drama, you can do, there's art projects that you can work on after school. I do studio art in fall, and I do basketball in the winter. Last trimester, I did the musical, and that was great. This trimester, I'm doing middle school baseball. I've chosen to do soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. Those are my three favorite sports. The goal is to get them active and have them be part of a group that is different from their classroom group. So every day at 2.15, while a number of our children stay here to utilize our facilities, we bus most of them over to the senior school. It's a five minute bus ride. They get to use all the field space, the gym spaces, the tennis courts, the hockey rink, the swimming pool, everything. The goal here is to have children get through the middle school who are competent and confident, and the way to do that is through relationships. I like to talk to my teachers a lot. They're just my go-to people. <laughs> my teachers are more than teachers to me and to everyone else. They're also people that are there for you, that you can count on and ask for help. Confidence also comes in knowing that you can fall on your nose and get back up and you move along. Every kid leaves here with some kind of success under his or her belt. They go off happily and eager to hit the next phase of their lives and be open to successes there.